Well, I think trying to describe the relationship between virtualization and cloud computing, it's worth really setting the scene for how they might fit within an overall continuum. Um, so customers have the choice, of course, of buying their own services under what one might refer to as a, a DIY, so do it yourself. As you move along for that continuum, you might then move into managed services. Beyond managed services, you can move into virtualization. And then really the, the panacea that people are uh, looking at this, these days is around cloud computing. So virtualization is certainly part of the overall overall mix. I think the, uh, there's almost a symbiotic relationship really between virtualization and cloud computing, so they really go hand in hand. You know, you really can't turn a newspaper or a trade magazine nowadays and not see something mentioning about the cloud. So um, you, you would be forgiven for thinking it might be a, a fad. Um, but uh, I can tell you it is really perhaps one of the most pivotal moments in, in the ICT industry. It really is a genuine, serviceable opportunity. Um, if you take a look at the history of the marketplace in Asia Pacific, um, if you look at IDC's recent report, for instance, they're forecasting uh, this year out, out to about $1.3 billion worth of uh, opportunity within the cloud computing sphere. So I think it's a very genuine business opportunity for customers to improve their business productivity, customers to tap into new growth opportunities in Asia, and of course for service providers to then service that, uh, that requirement within the customer base as well. Well, you know, there, there are a number of challenges that uh, need to be considered when you're moving into cloud computing, um, not least of which uh, I think some are specific not only to Asia-Pac, but also more broadly speaking around, around the world. And, and the one I would pick out first would be legislation. Um, so data protection, basically. There are, as you look across the planet, there are different rules and regulations that customers must adhere to when you're managing and processing the data around customers. Um, so, for instance, we have uh, banking customers in Australia that have approached us to say, can you help us deploy a cloud computing service and we're like of course no problems but then they say but we need to know where the data is going to be which is kind of like an oxymoron right so really if your cloud computing service is delivering services from the cloud anytime anywhere on a pay-as-you-use basis why would you need to know where the data is well of course if you're a bank you do so I would say that's probably one of the preminating uh, factors the second one uh, is security um, and so you're really asking customers now to let go of control of some of their IT systems and assets and possibly even applications, how do you then uh, assure that customer that actually everything's being managed with the same rigour, the same degree of confidence that they would have done through themselves as well? So I think there's a, a transitionary phase, if you like, for customers to move through that trust uh, phase with, with the providers that they work with. Um, and uh, so, for instance, with Telstra International, uh, we've worked with customers like Sarabos, for instance, to help them go along their own continuum to move into managed services as a start point. Um, so we've deployed a, an IPVPN managed network service for them across the Asia pack. Uh, but we are charting a path for them on, on their behalf towards ultimately cloud computing. So I think as we move along those steps, the customer's confidence and trust uh, can build. Yeah, tra transition in and transition out uh, is something that uh, many of the, the lawyers actually spend a lot of time helping customers understand how they contract uh, you know, with, with service providers much like Townshend International. Um, there are some key considerations. We've talked about legislation, we've talked about security. But then you have the operational considerations as well, as how do I actually physically move equipment from one place to another? So, uh, so we worked with a bank across Asia, PAC, for instance, who had um, servers in over 50 locations across Asia, um, and their plan was to consolidate their servers into two key data centers between Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, why did they choose those locations? Well, Hong Kong and Singapore have uh, regulatory stability, um, they have good access to skilled labor, um, and there's some very strong links in terms of the network services that we can provide between those two countries as well, which are resilient, redundant, and diverse. So as a banking customer, you need almost bulletproof IT infrastructure, um, and for that particular customer, their journey towards the cloud is to move along, first of all, to a private cloud, so we've helped them enable their private cloud service. Um, key considerations there are, how do we transition out the hardware that's in the 50 countries? Um, how do we then build out the new data centers that are going to be in Singapore and Hong Kong? And how do we ensure that the uptime and that the serviceability of that environment is as uh, good as it was before, and if not better? Oh, 
Okay, so I think the, first of all, the cloud computing trend, as I'll refer to it, I think genuinely is perhaps the biggest opportunity that the service provider community uh, has had in, in a long while. Um, the ability for us to provide a cloud-based service to a customer really is inherent to the business that we provide already. So if you think about the nature of a cloud service, it really is about providing access to applications and services and infrastructure on a pay-as-I-use basis. Um, it, you look back over 100 years ago, we established the telephone system that people could share as a shared service. You don't own the telephone network, and yet you benefit from the utility of the telephone service. The service provider industry has the ability to translate its billing relationship with customers on a utility-style basis, and I think that genuinely is what's going to push this over and to help realize this trend has become a reality.